The story of my family's serial migrations over two centuries, across continents and oceans, to ultimately become pioneers of the Canadian West, is not unique. Hundreds of thousands of descendants of German Bohemians, the progeny of several hundred 17th century emigrants from Bavaria to Bohemia and beyond, can and likely do tell similar stories of their ancestors. Yet the migrations of this cohort, this German diaspora as it is sometimes called, are not well known. Let's begin where we left off in part one, the Egerland. After crossing the border into Bohemia in the mid-17th century, hundreds of German-speaking farmers and tradespeople settled in the area north and south of the Eger River. Several branches of my family emerged from villages and towns in this region. How Bohemian am I? Well, 111 of my great-great-great-great-great-grandparents were born in Bohemia. Three generations later, a central figure in this story, my great-great-grandfather Johann Lang, was born in Hesselsdorf. In 1840, he married Barbara Rice, a farmer's daughter, so described, from nearby Wusleben. They lived in Hesselsdorf in house number 64. All houses were numbered here, as they were later in Galicia. Today, the village is called Hoshtka. In 2008, I traveled there from Prague with Mary and a friend. The old abandoned German part of the cemetery confirmed my ancestry there, although it has been out of use since the late 1940s, when the last German speakers were driven out in retribution for the Nazi invasion of 1938. From the cenotaph, we note that many Germans, including an Ernst Lang, from this village lost their lives fighting for the Kaiser in World War I just as the sons of settlers in Felicienthal did on the Eastern Front. But I get ahead of myself. Johann took up his father's carpentry trade as had his father before him, my great-great-great-grandfather Franz, and his father Wenzel before him, and most likely his father, also a Johann Lang, who was born in 1702. To put it in perspective, when my grandfathers Maximilian and Franz Lang began building houses in Winnipeg in 1904, they were continuing what was already a 200-year tradition for at least some descendants in the Lang family. My father, also a John Lang, admitted to being a poor carpenter. I can see when it's crooked, but I can't make it straight, he'd say. Great-great-grandfather Johann's carpentry skills likely played a part in the family's pulling up stakes to capitalize on new opportunities to the east, the second great family migration. A word about names. The name John has an H in it because it's derived from Johannes, shortened to Johann and again to Johann with one N, and finally to John. In German, a J is pronounced like a Y in English, hence Johannes rather than Johannes. Unlike the English tradition, our ancestors' cultures created nicknames from the back end of names. Johannes, you drop the Yo, and you have Hannes, shortened to Hans, which would be translated as Johnny. Little Johnny would be Hansel, and little Greta would be, you got it, Gretel. Hansel and Gretel. Teresa, Teresa, my father's mother's name, was nicknamed Rezel. Time to move on. Several decades after the Habsburgs sought to Germanize the Czechs, their expanded empire now included what was called Galician, or Galicia, which is today largely southern Poland and western Ukraine. Emperor Ferdinand I was eager to Germanize those Poles and Ukrainians in this far-flung northeastern region of his empire. Initially, the empire covered some or all of the relocation costs, but by 1835, families had to pay their own way. That year, a land baron named Karl von Zeif, who owned or controlled a tract of forested land in a valley near the Carpathian Mountains, invited German Bohemian settlers to move in and develop it, and about 100 families from the Egerland accepted. They packed up and moved 1,000 kilometers to the east 
to the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains south of what was Lemberg, but is now known as Lviv. And the country today, of course, is Ukraine. There, with great effort, they cleared the forest, built houses, and established three villages, which were named for Baron von Zeiss' three children. Karlsdorf, Karl's village, Annaberg, Anna Mountain, and Felizienthal, Felix's Valley. Most German Bohemians were Roman Catholic, the state religion, and the settlers soon petitioned the bishop in Lemberg for permission to build a church in Felizienthal. No doubt they were hoping for something along the lines of the church in Hesselsdorf, but in this location one necessarily constructed of wood rather than stone and masonry. And to supervise the construction, they sought the skills of my great-great-grandfather Johann, who, in 1844, sold his house in Hesselsdorf and set out for Felicienthal with his wife Barbara and their growing family. But before he left, he likely studied the church in Hesselsdorf carefully, taking measurements and completing drawings, because the church he ultimately built in Felicienthal bore a striking resemblance to his family's church in Hesselsdorf. A document placed in the church's cornerstone tells of the settlers' travails and details their efforts to have a church constructed, and it listed Johann Lang as the chief builder or project manager. Felicienthal and its sister villages were well established when Johann and his growing family arrived from Bohemia. His neighbors and relatives included Eccles, Hartles, Geisbauers, Rices, Krauses, Mathis, Degelmans, Kleins, and Comforts. In short, a mirror image of our communities in rural Saskatchewan. In 2003, when Mary and I visited Felicienthal, which the Soviets had renamed Dolinivka, we walked the village, noting houses that had once been occupied by our own or our Saskatchewan neighbors' ancestral relatives. Aided by a series of maps produced in the early 1990s by genealogist and my colleague Siegfried Grudel, and by our host and our tour guide Vasil Dankevich, we were able to match houses with names. The original German houses. I don't know who this Schmidt was, but there you go. The information is from 1939, however, so it's not known which Johann Lang was shown as living just east of the church in house number 123, but its proximity to the church old Johann built suggests it may have been his. Another Johann Lang was registered here, across from a property once owned by my great-grandfather Michael Lang. That are German, we have a house of Johann Lang, which is almost certainly not Johann Lang the first, but would be probably Johann Lang the second. It's still standing, and it's right there. The hospitable lady who invited us inside said she knew only of an Eckel family of residing Lang. there at some the point. There, of course, in, as of today, no German speaking here, families have lived here for more than 80 years. In later episodes, I'll explore the migrations to Bukovina around 1900 and to North and South America in the early 1900s and later in 1926 and the final great exodus of 1939. As significant as the villages of Felicienthal, Anneberg and Karlsdorf were to my family, these are just a few of dozens of similar settlements in Western Galician and while there were Geisbauers in Annaberg, they also lived in Betarch, and there were Hartels in Skoli, Tuchoka, and Schmorge, just as there were Langs in Skoli and beyond, over time. And great-great-grandfather Johann wasn't the first Bohemian Lang to arrive. Siegfried Grudel's lists of original settlers from several decades before Johann Lang had already included the familiar names Eckel, Geisbauer, Lang, Kompert, and Degelmann, sometimes spelled Tigelmann. Kraus Hartel, among many more, and Ukrainian and Polish family names like Beletsky, Trotsky, Katella, and Zorowski often originated not far from Felicienthal as well. 
As South and North American descendants, it's important for us to recognize that although we descended from those immigrants, many, if not most, of our ancestors remained in Europe to endure one or two world wars. The fate of Felicienthal and its sister villages was unknown, sealed for 50 years behind the Iron Curtain, until liberation in August of 1991. The only information available to our family on this continent was based on rumors and half-truths, all suggesting that the villages, including Old Johann's church, were completely destroyed in World War II. Although my German relatives, including Siegfried Rudel, rediscovered the villages and the church in the early 1990s, on our side of the ocean, we were oblivious. In the next video in this series, I'll take an in-depth look at life in these villages, and we'll follow another group of families trek yet farther to the east to Bukovina.